It's Jordan Mulligan from the Mulligan Brothers, and today's interview highlight is with Moran Surf talking about lucid dreaming, something I practice myself and something that I put in my journal every single day, which leads me on to mulliganbrothers.com, where the new journal is available. Before that, which the link is in the description, before that, let's jump into the highlight. What is lucid dreaming and is, is it a tool that we can use? So lucid dreams are a moment where while dreaming, your consciousness wakes up as in you're aware of the fact that you're dreaming but you don't wake up you're in a dream but you're fully aware of that experience and you say okay i'm dreaming and i'm also the director so i can do what i want and i think the majority of people what we know uh, from dream reporting uh, are doing is they immediately open the window and they start flying out that's the common experience people uh, take on when they have the understanding that they can dream. They say, okay, if I dream, then I can fly above New York City and hover around Central Park and see it. And they immediately do it, and it does happen. And what's nice about it is that you direct, it's like you say I want to fly, but your brain creates the movie. Your brain kind of imagines how New York would look from above and gives you the movie that you want. It's like rendering the experience in real time. So you might fly above New York City. You might uh, summon your dream uh, your perfect date, the person you wanted to be with all your life, but they're now married to someone else with three kids, but you still wish that you had a chance. Well, now they can knock on the door, you open, and suddenly he or she are there. And you get to spend a lovely evening together uh, in the way your brain imagines the lovely evening to be, and you, you're as kind of real as it can get uh, because it's a movie that you're the main actor. Yeah. That's what lucid dreaming are. Uh, there is a lot of benefits to them. Uh, it turns out that you can both enjoy the entertaining part of that, but you can also use that to, say, eliminate a trauma. So let's say in your dreams you keep going back to the explosion in the tank, and you can't get away from it. You either wake up in uh, sweaty palms and like high uh, heart rate, or you just live for a nightmare, now we can say, okay, we're gonna bring you to this situation, but for the first time you can fix it. In your dream, you can actually save your friend who's in a burning tank, or you can actually call help. Like you can do things and suddenly this allows you to really navigate the situation differently, which helps your brain see things different. Maybe you were injured, now you're not injured. You can actually now walk on two legs where you cannot do in the real world. It becomes, it, it's real. So so, so, in many ways, you it's a short-lived experience, but it's, it feels real to you. Like you feel like you're actually walking. If you're if you're in a wheelchair and you can never walk again, suddenly you can run. That is a moment of joy that's worth the uh, everything. So there are therapeutic uses to that. There are entertaining uses to that. You can bring people and enjoy flying. And it seems like there are also aspects of that that could be useful for the awake world in the Kind of business aspect you can actually your brain when you're dreaming has less boundaries you can say okay i want to think about this uh, problem that we've been struggling with in the company for the last 10 years and see it from a different angle it's a little bit like uh, being on a, a, a hallucinogenic drugs you can choose a theme but your brain will still go it, into it in different ways and you don't control fully how it's going to happen and you will see something that's in your brain that you normally would just dismiss right away because you say, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like There's no way we can put a colony on, on the moon, so I'm not going to even go there. But in your dream, you do put a colony on the moon, and you see that actually mining uh, moon diamonds uh, is uh, lucrative for your business, but it's not too expensive to actually fly back and forth and bring the diamonds, and suddenly you're in diamond business uh, that's harvested on the moon, and you would not think about it in the uh, real world. That, that's kind of a, a third use of lucid dream. So fun, therapy, creativity, and the key thing up to recently was that it is something that only a fraction of the people in the world can experience naturally, about 12%. And we're getting better in giving it to many more people. Okay, so this is just one thing, this is a personal thing. Because uh, if a com if there is a company out there, I will def I would invest. Um, do you think that you talk about ultimate VR? If I, when I think about my, my lucid dreams, if somebody could have a machine or a, a pill or something that could 
initiate a lucid dream instantly? Do you think that's on the way? Do you think that could, is ever a possibility, like PlayStation v Lucid or what? It just, yeah, it just sounds like a very interesting thing to me. I, I was, I myself am being asked routinely and helping a number of companies. That, so, so you know, now I'm, I'm kind of sitting in the uh, conflict, of, conflict of interest seat because I know a few companies that are aiming to that, that I help. I think that, I think it's, it's likely to be a reality. There are challenges when it comes from like a lab experiment to real world. So, you know, you, you in the lab, we're satisfied when it works 70% of the time. So 70% of the people who come, we can give them the dream and they're living exciting, but 30% don't. It's very hard in the business world to sell a product that you say, hey, this PC might not turn on 30% of the time, so your data is going to be lost. The, the real world requires 100% uh, or, or close to that. And so, you know, so companies, I think that, that go into realms of unknown that struggle with the real world, which is you wouldn't pay a thousand dollars for something that wouldn't work. So until we get a hundred percent, we have to package it differently and say, okay, even if it doesn't give you a dream, we can give you those 10 things that would be valuable and maybe it will and over time. So, so I think that, I think that now you, you're kind of going with me into the challenge of turning lab experiments into real world studies or, or products and it's a challenge that uh, is why a lot of things don't make it, uh, even though they're cool. Like you go to the lab and you see, oh my God, you have self-driving cars that can also fly. Why do I not sit in the street and tell you, well, because self-driving cars sometimes crash and, like, uh, and uh, the world doesn't let you drive a car that's safe and faster and like a, kind of takes you on a ride chair from your home to wherever you want without parking and all of those great things we can do, they require perfection in order to be in the real world. What's, what does it look like That's at the real. moment? Is it like is it like a something that will wake you up and keep you asleep? So, like light LEDs, or is it like some chip in the brain? Or the, the the easiest, simplest thing we have right now, and that's all public data because we did studies and the studies are published academically, so everyone can just take it and build their own if they wanted. Uh, is is the, the kind of the most uh, intuitive one requires still. Uh, two devices and a person that sits next to your bed. So I'll tell you what it is, but you'll see why it's not trivial, but it's also you see how to overcome that. What we do right now in the lab is if you, Jordan, are a subject, we have you come to the lab, then we put something on your head that's called EEG. It's a device that's kind of like, a, you see in the movies, like it's kind of like does, you know, beep, 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 but only for the brain. So it looks like brain waves, a little bit more uh, uh, nuanced. It has many, many like electrodes scattered over your brain and they all measure your brain activity. And all this uh, thing does is it tells us when you're asleep and when you're in a stage of sleep that's called REM, rapid eye movement, which is the most likely uh, stage where dreams could occur. They could occur in other places, but REM is the kind of seat of dreams uh, in many ways. Like the probability of having a dream is much higher. So this device, all it does is just reads your brain activity and sends it somewhere. Uh, or that somewhere, there's a human being who needs to look at your brainwave and know how to read those things and say, aha, Right now is in RAM. That person, uh, right now, is a, is a te te sleep technician. They're trained for that. They do it really, really fast and really, really accurately. There are ways to over, to uh, do it with machines. So you can, and that's where the 70% versus 100%. If you train a computer to do it, the computer would be, for the most part, accurate in detecting that you're in RAM stage even, but sometimes they're gonna make mistakes. And if you make a mistake, everything falls apart. Let's say either a machine or a human detected that you're right now in the REM stage, they now have to press a button that activates a, a second machine. That machine is called a, the a transcranial magnetic stimulator. It's a little a magnetic coil that you put close to the head, not in any way painful, not in any way troubling, but it kind of injects magnetic current. We have to put it next to specific locations, the temporal region and the frontal areas, F3, F4, so specific locations and specific a current, specific kind of stimulation, the frequency matters here. It's 40 hertz to activate gamma cells. It becomes technical, but not too much. Like we can, you know, we can calibrate all of that in, in five minutes of, of like, you know, button presses. So what happens is that you get to REM sleep. We know that you're in REM sleep. We zap your brain with magnetic current in the right frequency in the right location. And it is enough to basically turn on your consciousness without waking you up. You kind of wake up and you say, oh, but I'm still dreaming, game on. That's a new start. 
Lucid dreaming is the most amazing experience you'll ever have if you've not done it. And it's basically like being fully awake in a dream. It's almost like a hyper reality. Um, if you haven't experienced it, it sounds like a load of mumbo jumbo. It doesn't sound real, but um, it's something that Shaolin monks practice, in fact, and they practice skills within dreams. And the reason I learned, learned this skill, um, I was reading Phil Jackson's book and I wanted to become a great basketball co uh, player. And he used to try and teach people to do lucid dreaming and practice basketball in their dreams. So this is how I came on to lucid dreaming. Uh, that's why I was so interested to talk about it. If you've not done it before, I genuinely recommend practicing it. It takes a long time to learn and become a skill, but just watching this video today and researching about it, you're now aware of it and the likelihood of you lucid dreaming has just increased so much. Um, and the best way that I figured out how to lucid dream was I would do reality checks every single day. I still do these. I do my finger through my hand. And if my finger doesn't go through my hand, then I know I'm not dreaming. And then also I'll look at text. So that says not a journal, which is on mulliganrivers.com, link down below. And look at the text, put it down, look again, it's still the same. In a dream, if you did that, the text would change. And I know these sound really strange. It's the truth. It just, it's just the way it works. I don't know how it works, but it's just the way it works. Same with like times on clocks in a dream, if you look away and look at a clock. So they're called reality checks. I recommend you start with reality checks. And the last thing, and this is the biggest thing, and I'm not just saying this as a segue to go buy one of these, but it's journaling. So every single night, I'll journal my dreams afterwards. So that helps with dream recall. Um, so when you wake up in the morning, do a little dream, write what you dreamt about. Some of you people might say that you don't remember your dreams or you, you struggle to remember your dreams. It's just because when you wake up, if, if you just wake up straight away and don't ponder on what you just dreamt about, you'll most likely forget it. Unless it was a really strong dream, you'll just forget it. But if you wake up, don't do anything. Just lay there for a moment, reminisce on the dream, and then go get your book and start writing it down. You'll remember every single detail of the dream and you'll start to get really good dream recollection. And that's gonna help massively. The last trick that I'd recommend is wake up a little bit earlier than normal, um, maybe like an hour or two. Wake up and then try and get into a dream from that point. Um, that helps. I feel like you're in the right kind of sleep point when you do that. But anyway, this all sounds like mumbo jumbo and you might think it is. I recommend you to give it a try. If not, just pass on me like a tinfoil hat crazy person that I now look like trying to explain about flying around in dreams. But anyway, thank you to Moran Surf for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, that's it guys. If you wanna see what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis, go follow me on Instagram where I jump into ice lakes, I lift heavy stones for strongman, I eat lots of plant-based foods and have lots of fun making these films and traveling around the world to film more projects like this at Jordan Mulligan River. Um, have a blessed and productive day, go inspire some change and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.